One thing I've noticed is a lot of people really struggle with using position absolute when it comes to making responsive designs. And of course, we need to make everything responsive. And position absolute, maybe the first thing is maybe don't use it if you can avoid it. But sometimes it, it is the better solution or sometimes you're stuck having to use it. And in those cases, it can be frustrating when you're just you're, you feel like you're throwing magic. Now you have to guess at every number and then you resize the page and it's not really flowing the way you'd expect it to. And you're using percentages and maybe it's not things aren't lining up the way you'd want. So in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at part of this front end mentor project that you can see on the screen right now. And we're going to be focused on these two credit cards because this is uh, something I've seen a few people trying to do with position absolute and where we could actually use grid probably to lay them out, but position absolute works well for them. And it's less so of getting the layout like this, but it's more so the logo here, the text, each piece here is a separate element on top of a background. And so to be able to do that, Position Absolute can actually work pretty well and you can make it perfectly responsive as long as you take the right approach to doing it. So in this video, we're gonna use this project to look at how we can use Position Absolute and still have things be perfectly responsive. Hello, my front end friends. Thank you so much for coming to join me once again. And if you're new here, my name is Kevin and here at my channel, I help you fall madly in love with CSS. And if I can't get you to fall in love with it, I'm hoping to at least help you be a little bit less frustrated by it. And today we're gonna to be doing that by taking a look at position absolute and how we can make sure that it does stay responsive. And we're gonna jump into the code now and you can see I'm not starting with very much. Um, I have a basic starter template here. I've linked to the Google fonts for this project and I've set up the colors as custom properties in my CSS, and that's about all I've really done. Uh, and I have this content grid that is right here. And so for the content grid, my idea here is I just want something that's gonna hold my content and make it two columns. I'm not gonna go into the code that's for that because I really just wanna focus on these guys and the whole position absolute thing, but my finished code will be linked down below. So if you wanna see how that content grid works, you can also check that out uh, on, at your own time. But in here, we're gonna need two things. And well, we need two things. We need something for the cards. We need something for the form so then we can actually focus on the cards. So to be able to do that, and we're gonna have my card previews, which is going to be the div here that I have the two cards in it. Uh, and then over here, we can just have a placeholder for the form. And here is what that is giving us where I'm using grid. So we get like two equal sections here. And if we go look at the CSS, I have put a border on the two elements there just so we can see them and see the space that we're gonna be working with. Uh, and you have two columns that are coming there that we'll worry about a little bit later. Uh, and the reason I have them stacking is, well, we've looked at one design. We also have the mobile design like this where we need the card sort of overlapping and it's gonna be another exploration where we're gonna look at sort of the inside of them, but we're also gonna look at the outside and how we can handle those as well. Um, but of course we need the cards to actually be in there. And so I just have a card front and a card back that are gonna be right here, nice and simple, nothing too fancy. And of course we need the different things that are actually going to be in there. And this is where there's a really important thing when it comes to position absolute that you sort of need to decide at one point because we have these images uh, here and even the back, like even the card here and, and the background gradient thing here, those are images and I could set those as background images. The problem with a background image is it doesn't actually take up any space. And when we use position absolute, we always want to have it like a space that that thing can live in. And if we don't have a defined space for it, that's the first thing that can make life more difficult because then you're working within like the zero height div or something like that. And that, does, that just makes life a little bit harder. Um, to function, but we do need to place all of these things in here. So you can see I have an image. I have the image for my card front, my logo, and then I have the text here, just all in spans. And then we can do the same thing. We have the card back background, uh, as well as this right here. And I am specifically using the, the card front BG and the card back BG here as actual images, instead of having them as background images, just so they're gonna actually define what my space is. And those, uh, we'll see how we're gonna do that. But it's for me, it's really important that these actually get defined as actual items. Uh, the other thing is right now we can't see it, but I do have the logo floating around here somewhere, but it is white. So just really fast, I have a variable here. We're gonna turn on dark mode for a second. Um, there we go, just so we can see that the logo is there. And we'll leave it in dark mode for now because it's easier on the eyes and I like it better and we can always switch it back after. But yeah, I'm just really important for how I'm doing this. Different situations will have different things. Sometimes you'll have other content and then one item in there that's position absolute. That's fine. As long as you have some content that's defining the size that you're working with, that's the first thing you wanna have. 
So card front has a whole bunch of content in it. But anyway, let, I'll show you what I'm talking about. It'd be a little bit easier. So to better illustrate, and this is something I, I always tell people when they're, if you're newer to CSS uh, and, and doing things, it's a bit of a different mental model in general. And it's a lot easier when you can see the spaces you're working with. So putting backgrounds or borders on things to help visualize what you're working with is always a nice first step. Um, so yeah, there we can see I have these green borders now that are coming on these so I can visualize the space that I'm working with. And what I wanna do, we do wanna be using position absolute. But as I said, we wanna be a bit careful, but I'll show you why. So say we wanted all of these items to be position absolute and I've put classes on them. So that does make things easier to select and we're gonna be selecting them individually in a second. But what I could do just to make my life a little bit easier here is I could say that my card front and select everything inside of it. So this is just selecting all the direct children of my card front. And then on there, we can put the position absolute. So if I hit save, everything just sort of stacks on top of each other and it makes this big mess that we can see right here. Now, one way to understand this, what's happening here is on my card front, I'm gonna hit save now and give it a height of 20 pixels. And you can see it's moved, we have 20 pixels there and maybe let's make that 50 pixels. And the card front, and you know what, maybe even we'll change the border color. Border color on this one's gonna be red for a second. And you can see my card front here at the top is only that tall. All the other elements are in there, but they're position absolute, which means they're pulled out of the flow. And because they're pulled out of the flow, they're ignored by everything, including the parent. So the parent is shrinking down to zero pixels tall. And that just makes life really hard to work with. As I said, it's a lot easier if we actually have a defined space to work with. We can say select everything except the background image. And we can do that like this. So we're selecting every child except for, so everything but or not including the card front BG. And now if I hit save, you can see things have moved around a little bit. Why did that not work? Uh, and that's just because I still have the height on here. So we can get rid of that height that's on there. And there we go. We have solved all the problems or not all the problems. We've solved some of the problems that we've had. Now, another thing you're gonna notice is the logo, uh, or not the logo, but the text, well, the logo and the text and everything else is overlapped. And it's also moved over to the right side. And that's because when we do a position absolute, it's sort of gonna try and stay where it originally was in the flow. So in this case, we have our image, everything else is moved over, and then they're getting a position absolute. So they're sort of all stacking, but they're not like shooting off somewhere else. They're gonna stay in that realm that they were living in, but now we can actually position it but where, how are we positioning it? We still need to think about that. And I wanna make sure that I'm positioning it in this red box, but ideally this red box should actually fit the image that's inside of it. And that's the whole thing. Like we could give it a physical, like an actual height and width, it's an option, but giving something an actual height and width, it could be a little bit tricky, especially if you want things to be responsive because responsive height, all of that is a little bit, we, we try to avoid that as much as possible generally. So I actually want this image to define the size of what my div is going to be. So one way we can do that, and this one's very peculiar to this one situation where I'm using an image and I don't have any other content. Often something like this wouldn't necessarily be needed, but really because we're trying to focus on like this one little thing that we're working on, I'm gonna give this a width of min content and we'll hit save on that. And you can see the width is actually shrunk down to fit the space of the image. And min content means get as small as you can based on the content that's inside of there. This specific step won't always be necessary in this situation, but it's one of those things where I'm not worried about really how you get to this point, but the point of what I'm doing right now is like trying to have a defined space that I'm gonna be working with. I wanna have this width, this height, and ideally if you have content that can set that space up rather than having to set like a fixed width and a fixed height that are really just very specific and then it is hard to update later on. That's usually the best approach. So I'm trying to base things on the content that are in there and with the image being the only thing that's in there, this is perhaps the best approach. Often you might be using something like display flex or some other things where it's sort of going to be doing its own thing anyway on the parent. And so this might not be something that you need to do. It's really dependent on the situation, but the main thing right now is just get yourself a defined space to be working in. Uh, there is two things with this because this is an image. A lot of resets have something like this where they have a width 100% and or not width, I should say a max width. So if you have that, you'll actually have the whole thing disappear. So that is 100% of the parent. And if it's trying to be a width 100% of the parent, but the parent is a min content, which means go as small as you possibly can get, we just shrink down to nothing. 
So if ever you do run into this type of situation, a little bit of a divergence from positioning now, I do apologize. But if ever you do run into this position, what you could do is select the specific element that is causing the problem. And we could do a max width on there of revert. And revert basically means, or is it does mean go back to whatever the it was originally. It is different from initial. I'm not gonna go into the difference of them now, but often when you use initial, you probably actually wanna be using revert. Now the last thing here, just really fast, since we are working with an image, you'll notice this little space that's underneath here. That just means you need a display of block on the image, which is a very common reset that you'll see used. Now really fast, I just set this exactly up how we had before, but added these selectors to also be doing the back and not only the front. And I'm gonna just take this part right here and we're gonna move it down a little bit just cause I like having the parent first and then the children coming after that. We'll hit save on there. Uh, it also got rid of the color, but again, we have the border that's setting up the color on those so we can see them. Now I'm gonna start with taking the number. So I just have my card front number here and just it has a larger font size. It'd be a little bit easier to see what's happening. So I'm gonna set the font size up for it first and we're gonna try and position this. I'm gonna say a top of zero for now and it will move all the way up, but I'm also going to say a right of zero and hit save and you can see it's moved all the way over. But remember when I talked about we want to set up something so we're working within a confined space. We're defining the space we want to live in and my number is completely gone from there. Or you know what, let's do this instead of a top of a bottom uh, and it's going to shoot all the way down to the bottom of the page and that's really awkward. I don't want it there. I want it to live within this gradient background that I've set up with the green border on it. So to be able to do that, I want to go ahead and define where the containing block for this element is. And how can we do that? Well, the easiest way is usually on the parent. So on the card front and the card back here, or I'll do it on this because we'll eventually get rid of those colors, uh, the borders on there. And on this, I'm gonna give those a position of relative. And now when I hit save, you're gonna see the number jump up. And now it's living within the green box here because now this area is the containing block for it which means that because that's the containing block for it, that this bottom is now relative to the bottom of here and the right is relative to the right of there, which I'm assuming you sort of know. Uh, but we obviously don't want it to be here. We need to move it around a little bit. But the first thing I'm gonna do, and remember these are actually working because here we turned them all into position absolute. So other than the front BG, so like all of these elements here are position absolute as well as my CVC number down here. So first position absolute, then I can use my top, my bottom, my left and my right. And because we're locking it into where this green box is, it makes it much easier to be responsive as we're gonna see soon. Uh, but a few things really, really quickly. We have my number there, so let's leave this like that for a second. I wanna show you another nice trick um, because there's a bit of an issue. Uh, what we're gonna do to highlight this issue is on my front and my back here, let's add a bit of padding, padding to rem. And when we add padding, it, it adds space around, right? So now we have all this space before my border that we can see. And let's do this maybe for the logo because the logo is the first one. And for now, we're just gonna try a top zero and you'll notice that it goes into the padding. Normally if you do padding and there's text inside, the text is pushed in. When you're using position absolute, that's not the case. We end up with the space that's showing up here. So I don't want padding now, but if we look at the design, I do sort of want like to sort of treat this like padding. So even if this card was a background image and I just set a fixed width and a fixed height instead of basing it on the size of that original image, I wouldn't be able to use padding to create all the space that I need around here on all the different sides. I have to come up with a different approach. And we're gonna do it sort of the, the traditional way, but then I'll show you a nice trick to sort of create fake padding when you're using positioning. So the first thing we're gonna do is get rid of that padding because we don't actually need it. <laughs> and we're gonna come in with a different solution. And so here, my logo, instead of being a top there, we're just gonna say that we wanna move down by two rem. So I can do that and it's moved down by two. And then we can also say a left of two rem and hit save and it's gonna move over by two. And what this is doing is it's saying the left side of my logo is two rem from the left and it's two rem down and the top is two rem down. And that's important because now if we jump over to my name, we'll skip the number and we'll come back to that. But if we look at the name and I wanna position the name somewhere, we can come and do that now, we'll put it over here. And we wanna put a bottom of two rem on there. So that's gonna pull it down. And of course the left of this can also be on that one. So it's positioned relatively close to where I want it to be. But the bottom of 
to rem here is not looking, it's looking at the bottom of this element. Whereas when I said top before, it was looking at the top of this element. And this is important, and you might already know this about positioning, but this comes in a lot when we wanna do something like our number. Because our number is not really an obvious distance away from anything, we sort of need to guess a little bit, but it's close to the middle. So my first guess when I see something like that is actually to do a top of 50% and hit save. And you know what? And we can throw the left on there, left of two rem. And if you look at that, it might not be exact, but it's actually pretty close. And a lot of the time people use a top of 50% because they want the item to be in the middle. Top 50% does not mean the middle. Top 50% means the top of that element is 50% away from the top. And the 50% is 50% of the parent. So we're going the top of these numbers, that blue line here is 50% of the way down. So it's not perfectly centered, it's offset by quite a bit. And there's other tricks we can use to center things with positioning. Uh, but for now, we're not gonna worry about that too much because we don't need it centered. And that I think is for me close enough. Uh, this is, I said we can avoid magic numbers. This is, you know, maybe you're gonna do a 52 and you're gonna sort of try and line things up closer to the actual design. If that's the case, that's perfectly fine. We're not magic numbering so much in terms of the overall layout. We are semi magic numbering though within like, within this little micro layout we're creating. But because it's gonna be contained within the space, when it is time to make it responsive, it's going to work a lot better. But even if you do get a little bit magic numbery with the, the elements or the numbers you're putting here, because it's self-contained within a certain space, when it is part of a bigger layout and things do start moving around, it's perfectly fine because they're all moving together and they're all sort of locked into that one little thing that we've created. So now I can come in and I can position here, I've just added the expiry as well, and I'm just doing the same idea, two rem over, two rem from there. Uh, and this is leading to one thing where I mentioned that we can solve this issue of having to repeat this number. And if ever you're using positioning and you're repeating a number over and over and over again, uh, first of all, I could make one big selector that would have the left of these all there since we are repeating that a little bit. Uh, but what to me is more useful is to have a selector for just the card front. So let's come right here. And in this selector, we can set a locally scoped custom property. So this custom property is not in my root. It's something that's only in my card front. So that means it's only available to that element and it is inherited. So that element and anything inside of that element. So now I can come down here and on every place I had this to rem, I'm just gonna select them all really fast with a command D or it's control D on Windows, command D on Mac. Uh, and then I can set those all up as my card padding. And the advantage with doing this with a custom property like that is now if I come and I need to go, actually, I need to tweak that a little bit. They're all gonna move at the same time. So if I need to reduce it, they all get reduced. If I need to make it bigger, they all get bigger at the same time. And so that just sort of now acts like padding would, but with positioning, which makes our life a little bit easier along the way. And so now I've also added my CVC number here on the back, which is definitely a little bit magic number -y, especially with the 44 here. So I said we'd move away from them, uh, but we're gonna move away from them in the sense of doing it like relative to the viewport and using fractions of pixels and stuff. We're getting things locked in in the layout that we want, and then we can control that all together. So, now, let's just say we do want to get this type of layout going on where we need to move things around and all of that. Once again, we can start thinking, well, maybe I can use position absolute for it. So let's just shrink this down a little bit just so it's a little closer to the design we're trying to do. And we can say, okay, I need my green card to be up and over. And now I need this card to be down and stay on that side, I guess. Uh, and this becomes easy to do. And once again, we could use position absolute for this on the cards themselves. So originally I'd set a position of relative here on the two cards. And I said this made them into the containing blocks. So everything would stay contained within that space. As long as the position here is not static, which is the default and we never really see it declared because usually we're, we're declaring it, it's because we're changing it from the default. But if it's static, it's gonna break everything because now everything's relative to the viewport. But as long as you have a declared position other than static, so my relative like I had before, everything falls into line, but I can actually switch these over to absolute and it's still gonna work. Now things broke a little bit because they're not looking at each other, so they're overlapping each other now. That means my card front and my card back are still the containing blocks and those pieces we just positioned aren't gonna break out of 
the, the green borders basically that we put on there. So looking at the design, the card front should be in front. So we can easily do that by coming on here and just adding a Z index. Z index is basically layering things and I could even do a one here, but I'm gonna put a two just to be more obvious. So we're just pulling that forward. And now we wanna sort of move things around up and down. We're going, okay, if I need to move something, I wanna have a defined space that it's living in. And if I look here, I have a defined space for it. And the height here is being is is happening because of the way I'd set up my grid. You might not always have it, but this is why having borders or backgrounds on stuff can be really helpful because it lets you see, do I have a defined space that I can work with? In this case, yes, I have a defined space that I can work with. So because I do have that defined space on my card front, we could try this and we're gonna have a small problem, but let's just say that we do a top and actually this is bothering me that that's there. We're gonna do it this way around. But on here, we can add a top now, and this is gonna be a little bit, or you know what, let's do a bottom for now of zero, uh, and it's gonna go all the way down there because we have a defined space, but we haven't done anything to make that space the containing block and where we wanna contain it inside of. So we do need to make sure. So if we come back here and look, remember that's on my card previews here that has that border on there. So I have my card front and I wanna keep my card front inside of this card previews. So I can jump over to my CSS, come all the way up here, give my card previews a position of relative, hit save on there, and now it's lining up with the bottom of that orange box. So the bottom of that defined space, and now this is the containing block so it will not escape outside of it. That means I can also go on my card back here and put the right of zero to push it over to the right. And now we'll see that even though the cards are sort of moving around and balancing back and forth, and even though I use position absolute on those things that are inside the cards, I don't have to worry about their positioning anymore. I've set them up, I've locked them in, and now we have this layout that's pretty responsive and it's working well. And I'm happy basically with what I have here. I could move this up, maybe instead of a bottom zero, we'd actually use something like a top of 35% or something. Uh, just to sort of line it up where we need it to be, or maybe even a set size would be better for that. Just so if you don't want it to move with the viewport, that really depends on what you need and in the, the design that you have. And so we've created something that can function, that can work, and it can move around without any issue. So even when I get to this other one, now we have problems here with the way they're overlapping each other, and we'll talk about why in a second, but at least the cards themselves, despite having used position absolute for everything inside them, they move, they, they work, everything is fine because they're all relative to that defined space that we've created using position relative. We're not worried about like bigger picture, trying to move things with the viewport or anything like that. As Soon as you're dealing with the viewport, that's where things get into trouble. And the reason this is sort of broken now is again, I look at it and I go, well, what's happening? Well, I can see that my defined space that I had because of how I was using grid here was fine. I had all this height and I had the width because the width is always basically gonna be there. But when I get to this larger screen size, the height of that is going and collapsing away because I'm using position absolute on the children. My grid was helping me set things up when the items were stacked, but now that we have this shrinking away, it doesn't know what to do, so we're sort of stuck. So how can we fix this? So if we look at the design now, when we're at the bigger screens, these two don't actually need to overlap anymore. So maybe I could take a little bit of a different approach with them. And this is where you do need to be a little bit more like critical and thinking a bit about how am I gonna define that space or why is my space collapsing to zero or things like that. So what I think is a nice solution here, and we could give it a height and try and figure out how big to make it, 100% could work, but I always try to avoid setting heights because setting heights and responsiveness tend not to go hand in hand very well. So instead of trying to set a fixed height on something, for me, another option here would actually be within the media query, and I'm gonna come all the way down just to make life a little bit easier and set one up here is I'm gonna take my card front and my card back and I'm just using the same media query that I used for the to make the two columns. And on these, we had position absolute before, which means the parent doesn't see it anymore. It can collapse away. We saw this early on when we first set up the cards. And that's why I said, okay, I want my images in here to actually be defining my space. Now we're into that same situation as we were before where the parent has collapsed away because it doesn't see the children. And so now I want to use my card front and my card back to actually define the space. So I can do that by switching their positioning back over to relative. And now if I hit save, they stack on top of each other because position relative is very similar to position static in the defaults. 
Um, but now they stack on top of each other and we've solved a little bit of that problem we had. Now we also have the space that we need here. We'll worry about that after though. Uh, let's just worry about how we can actually get this card off to that side. And one thing that you might think when you're using positioning, you can actually do something like I could do uh, bottom is two rem. And because I have a position relative on here, I can use that and it's gonna move up by two rem. Or I could use that and do a negative two and pull it down by two. The one thing this doesn't work with when you have a position relative on the parent, because otherwise it's a little bit similar to position absolute, but it's not pulled out of the flow but it would make positioning things like this side really, really hard, or even getting this two rem from the bottom, it would make that really, really hard. And that's why position absolute is a good thing. And sometimes we want to use it. But what we can't do is something when you have position relative, I can't do a right of zero and get it to move to the right side of its containing block. It just doesn't work because that's not how position relative things work. Uh, it's that's one of those magic things that comes from position absolute and one of the reasons we like using it because it just makes life a little bit easier on that front. So like even on the card front, if I did a bottom zero, it's not actually going to go bottom zero of the parent. It's more, it's based on where it already is. So if I did a bottom zero here of like two rem, it's going to move, but move from where it was and not two rem of the containing block that it's inside of. Uh, that's what position absolute is for and why we use it. So we can get rid of that one. But because we can't use the right of zero here, we could try and magic number it over. But another easier way to do that is to use a margin left, which will push it as far to the right as we can. And we usually we use auto when we want to center something because we do a left and a right. But if we have just a margin left of auto, that means like go as far away from the left as you can. So if we, so here is like this adapts and moves around a little bit, we can see that uh, it's always over on the left side. And then to put the space in between them, we could use a margin or something like that. But for that type of thing, I like using a grid with gap these days. Putting that on there, you can see that it sort of worked. We have the big problem of the space on the top and that's just actually coming from when I initially set things up. Uh, when we were doing that, I'd set the top at 35% for when we were at the small screens. So we just need to make sure that we, we get rid of that. I could actually do it on here and get rid of all the positioning. Uh, because we have inset and inset is top left bottom and right and so we could just say uh, either a revert or an auto um, we we'll just make sure that all the positioning properties are taken off or as I said we could do a revert just to go back to what the default is as well I can then come here and hit save now to get rid of all the borders we had on there and we get I think what is pretty close to the type of layout that we wanted to have here and I think it's a nice exploration of how we can use positioning, but of course we don't have a form over here. And if you'd like to look at form and form validation and setting that side of things up to finish off this project, let me know in the comments down below and it could be something that we look at in the future. But for now, I'm gonna say thank you very much to my enablers of awesome, Jan, Johnny, Michael, Mr. Dave, Patrick, Simon, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.